Definitely an exciting building to play in. Um, definitely the greatest experience of my career so far last year, so we're hoping to you know, make it uh, another exciting series this year. We're expecting them to come out pretty hard. I mean, uh, it would be tough to lose twice in a row, and, and we're pretty sure they don't want to do it three times in a row. So uh, they're going to come out uh, with their A game, so we're just going to have to you know, battle back with ours. We're vining right now. How it works is you go on your video here, and when you hold your thumb down, it records, and then you can just put all your little segments together. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was kind of like in the back of everybody's mind that you could you get out of plan them again and stuff, but uh, it's kind of cool that we end up back here almost as a year from the day, so it's kind of cool. Hands on the pass, now gets it, they score! Two seconds left! The Edmonton Oil Kings are back-to-back -back Eastern Conference champions. The Calgary series, I think I'm, the one word that describes it for me is crazy. It was just back and forth, up and down. You never really knew what was going to happen. Some of those games where one team would score five goals in a period and think they were cruising the next night, the other team would respond. And, you know, the Hitmen played a very physical brand of hockey. You know, the Oil Kings, I thought, played their best game of the season in Game 7 and really shut them down. And, you know, I think the Calgary series, um, the way they played, the way the Hitmen played, um, prepared them for this round. You know, looking back, the, the biggest key for me is the Rhett Ruchinski goal in game number four here in overtime. Ruchinski makes one move, a little bit of a chance here. Scores! Ruchinski has scored for Edmonton! You know, it's 3-1 Portland if they don't score that. And it's, uh, it's an innocent play. It's a turnover just inside the blue line, and Ruchinski just fires it on goal and scores. And you can tell that from there on, I think the Oak Kings really believe that they can, they can win this series. It, it, they don't play very often once a year, but the rivalry is it's, it's awesome between these two clubs. Edmonton's going down this time. It's our turn. Meet you at Memorial Club, Saskatoon. Keegan Lowe and Dave Musil, I think they're going to see a lot of Ty Ratty and a, a lot of Nick Patan and Brendan Leipzig, so they're going to have to do their job on their own end. And mention that the guys, Joannik know, and Miraz, are going to be physical players. And, you know, Michael St. Croix had a great run here in these playoffs. He's going to have to continue scoring goals the way he has. And um, I thought, you know, he's been very effective hounding the puck. He's been all over the puck at times in these playoffs. So, you know, him, Curtis Lazar, Henrik Samuelson is a unit they always seem to contribute in big games. So. I'm really looking forward to it. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of different makers on both sides, and we'll see who steps up. There's a chance and a goal! Dylan Rock scores! Patan with Raddy. Patan to Raddy to Patan in front of the net. They score! Let's see what they say. It's a big call early. No goal. Kowski forced all the way, well not quite all the way back, he does give it away though, look going down to Samuelson, Samuelson shoots, scores! Samuelson scores for Edmonton and it's now 2 to nothing. now. There's a shot, now it might get noisy, they score! The goal trying to get a shot, Samuelson scores! Samuelson answers right back! As Edmonton halfway through this third period, has taken over the control of the game. There's a shot, and they score! Off the rebound, Curtis Lazar has made it 4-1. to one. Very, very solid. Uh, LB was outstanding some of the saves he made in the first period. And, uh, you know, coming into this game, uh, you know, I got a consistent amount of shots. And um, you can ask any colleague, they, they love that, and, and it keeps them in the game. So uh, I'm just glad I was seeing the talk tonight. feet are nice and small, which is good. 
because that's putting in just a small adjustment so you can go either direction, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the things we focused on was continuing to kind of take a real aggressive positional play, um, continuing to get into the lane real quickly and getting himself set up, um, making sure that he's constantly tracking the puck, whether it's into position or into saves, being aware of you know where his rebounds are going, which is typically a byproduct of how well he tracks his pucks. So where's he going to go? Like he has to come back at that quick. Point. Yeah, at that point, but I'm okay with that. At that point, you're relying on your Dina to help you out a little bit. I've been involved with the Oil Kings for the past two seasons, uh, past two full seasons, and I've uh, been working with LB and Tristan for, for about three years now. We used to help out spring camp and stuff like that throughout the, the organization's you know years past, so it's been uh, been a good experience, and they've been both a uh, real pleasure to work with. He's got a few things that are huge assets in his game. I think number one is his movement. Uh, he's very good with his edge control. He changes direction really quickly and gets himself into position real well. Um, his size, I mean, obviously being six foot three, you take up a lot of the net, um, and his positional development has really allowed him to, to make that size an advantage for him. Let's keep going, buddy. Keep it rolling. We'll be ready tonight. We'll uh, have our free game here once we go. Okay, buddy. Let's rest. He puts the extra time in where needed and definitely is a uh, you know, student of the game. Puts a lot of extra emphasis on things like video and, and being very coachable. We have some real good dialogue about the areas of his game that he needs to continue to develop with. He's been a, a true professional in every sense of the word. and um, I think long term, the, the little things that he's developed over the course of his junior career will help him as a pro. You never want to see your team lose out there and you can't do anything about it so uh, you feel a little bit guilty at times but uh, I'm trying to do the best I can to rush back into things. We just got to compete more, uh, win more battles. Brassois has been excellent for us. I think he's kept us in, uh, in the first game, in the first period especially, and even this game he kept us in the game early. And uh, I think uh, we just got to pick our up intensity game again. And I mean, the good thing is we haven't played our best hockey, and we're coming out with the game uh, one one split. We've had a pretty good record at home this year, uh, so it's always good to play in front of the Rexall crowd. And um, coming out with this split, we got to approach it now as a five-game series and think of a home ice advantage.